So George, um, in medicine, we have a problem with some people getting very high fevers that cause seizures and other things. We also see patients who come in from a hike here in Arizona who are hyperthermic and have heat stroke. What goes wrong in the brain? What, what happens to these people? Well, one of the things that happens, again, I, I mentioned earlier how membranes can become too fluid. And one of the key roles of a membrane <clears throat> is to be uh, a controlling mechanism for keeping different concentrations of ions like sodium ion or potassium ion at the right concentrations inside of the cell, outside of the cell. And when the membrane integrity is compromised, and fever can do this, you can have ions leaking in and out of the cell in, in a non-controlled way. That's, that's how neurons work, too, is by pumping e exactly. ions. Exactly. <clears throat> so you can see where, where neurological challenges are going to arise during fever. Mm -hmm. People also find that when you study fever, you find that the cells are producing what are called heat shock proteins. These are proteins mm -hmm. that are produced in almost every organism when they're given thermal stress. The heat shock proteins are a repair mechanism, a repair system that comes in and proteins unfold at high temperature and these, these molecular chaperones, heat shock proteins, refold proteins. So they're clearly... But they're not there all the time. They're induced. By generally the induced. Some organisms in fact, this is an interesting side story. Organisms that can expect to see spikes in temperature, they can't predict them strictly. It's going to be hot today, but they know that over the course of the summer, things could get really hot. They often carry around a standing stock level of heat shock proteins. So they make them constitutively. They make them all the time. Most organisms don't make these proteins at any, to any degree until it gets hot, and then they switch on the synthesis of these proteins. So I've quickly. been very interested in heat shock proteins as a possible mechanism for mediate, mediating turning on fever in mammals, but they go all the way back, as I understand it, to bacteria, That's where, right. in, as I understand it, they had a similar function, um, that <clears throat> when bacteria are challenged, especially by other pathogens, one of the ways they turn on their defense mechanisms is with heat shock proteins. So it's not, so it's not just temperature. Is that correct? That's correct. In, in fact, I think in fact, an interesting side story I'll begin with is that where don't you find heat shock proteins? You don't find them in Antarctic fish and some of the Antarctic invertebrates because the Antarctic organisms, the, the fish I worked with for my thesis studies, for example, have a, a, a very low body temperature, one is min minus 1.9 degrees Celsius. Right below, at, below freezing. Right, right at the freezing point of seawater. And they may only see a, maybe a two-tenths of a degree change in temperature, maybe a degree over the course of their lifetimes. So they don't need so they to. Don't need to adapt. They don't need to have the ability to turn on various types of genes or use. But they still get infected. If shock proteins were effective for turning on defenses for, for infection, you might still expect to see them. Well, that's true. In fact, these fish are heavily parasitized. But I don't think anybody has looked to see, you know, in this case, if if they're putting out heat shock proteins. But the fact of the matter is, when we tried to induce the synthesis of heat shock proteins in these fish, they couldn't do it. So they have lost, they have the genes for the proteins, but they have a, a dysfunctional gene regulatory system. Nothing to turn system. them on. Nothing, yeah, nothing, they don't have that thermal switch to turn them on. Now there may be other switches involving pathogens that we, that we don't know. But these are, you know, as you mentioned earlier, these are essentially universally occurring proteins except in these very cold tolerant organisms that don't see changes in temperature. Wow. So, so let's go on in a minute and talk about bacteria that have their own built-in thermometers. <laughs> 